Ko e ina. Meaning water is life. My name is Betty Barlow Salt. I'm 75 years old. It's always been like this, so we're used to it. We're brought up in this dry, dry area. But for now, it's making us cough and the smoke out there is making us all somehow, you know, a little bit sick, especially him with his breathing problems. So we had to kind of stay inside. The grass needs water, the trees needs water, the animals need water and us. Vast regions across the globe are drying up at an alarming rate. Drawing on data from a European meteorological institution, Nikkei analyzed 40 years of soil moisture levels worldwide. Areas that are drier than in a normal year are shown in red. The results reveal that since the early 2000s, rapid drying has expanded across wide regions, from northern China through Russia, Central Asia around the Aral Sea, Sub-Saharan Africa, and the southeastern Amazon rainforest, extending all the way to North America. The situation is especially dire in the American Southwest, through which the Colorado River flows. This prolonged drought now in its 20th year, is being called a mega drought. These are the pasture lands of Arizona. There is growing concern that the long lasting drought will affect the production of hay exported to countries such as Japan. Nikkei also examined soil moisture levels in the Colorado River basin. Our analysis shows that the drying trend is advancing across nearly the entire agricultural region. In northern Arizona, alarming environmental changes are unfolding across the lands of the Navajo people, one of the region's indigenous nations. Mike Benal grew up on this land. In the Navajo Nation, roughly 30% of households live without running water. He works for a non-profit organization that installs water systems in the yards of families lacking access. Right now, uh, here in Arizona, we're supposed to have monsoons. And that's when it, the, our annual rain comes, there's nothing. We've had like maybe two, two rainstorms in the past, since maybe a month ago now. We analyzed 40 years of weather observation data for the Navajo Nation. The results show a downward trend in precipitation from July through September, the time of the year when rain is typically expected. At the same time, summer temperatures between June and August are rising, up by about 2.4 degrees Celsius. The earth, the, the land is just more dry. Um, the, the vegetation turns brown quickly after when, in the spring. One of the indicators that, that it, it's dry, easier for it to catch fire and burn more. People have animals, like this, this one has sheep, and people also use it to eat. Animals still need water, they still need hay. Yeah. 
I have nine right now. I sold about half of it already because it's it's a lot the the drought and buying hay and all of that. Traditionally, people here have used windmills to pump groundwater. But Henry says that in recent years, the groundwater has begun to run dry. Windmills don't work. Um, we got to go out of town to get water. Probably if they, we keep not getting water, it would probably be best to just get rid of the livestock because they'll be easier. When I was younger, I remember we used to get a lot of snow in the winter time. I see over the years it's really declined a lot. So, climate change. Lake Powell sits along the middle reaches of the Colorado River, bordering the Navajo Nation. This man made reservoir the second largest in the United States by storage capacity, is experiencing a dramatic drop in water levels. So as you look out there, it's uh, where it's dark, yeah. that water's never been there. But where it's light, that's where the water level has been in the past. The highest this water has ever been was in 80, 1983 and 1984, and it was full. So it was about 3,720 feet, and right now we're at about 35. It was about 150 feet higher at that point than it is today. How much snow they got is how this water level went. The Colorado River originates in the Rocky Mountains, where snowfall is said to be declining. We're not anticipating that uh, at least the beginning of the 2026 season that we'll have our launch ramp here because we think the water is going to go down another 30 feet between now and the end of the year. If it continues to go down, it'll get to the point where they, they won't have any uh, ability to make power out of the dam. The turbines won't turn. Runnels notes that climate change is not the only factor behind falling water levels. You know, some of it might be climate change. I think that one of the really big things is consumption. Water loss across the Colorado River Basin is growing, and the pace has quickened since the early 2010s. Over the past decade, the volume of water lost is three times higher than in previous periods. The suspected causes include expanding farmland, population growth, and the influx of industry. Arizona's population has grown by nearly one million over the past decade, with further increases expected. Efforts to attract foreign industry are intensifying. Taiwanese semiconductor giant TSMC is now building a major facility in the suburbs. In addition to the residencies, in addition to the agriculture and other stuff, so at some point you've got to address conservation or you're, not, you're just not going to have water, period. So. Human water consumption is happening on a massive scale. But the looming crisis extends far beyond surface water. Vast agricultural lands stretch across the lower basin of the Colorado River. Yet an even greater crisis is unfolding below. According to a research team at Arizona State University that analyzed data from the U.S. German satellite GRACE, Arizona's groundwater has been pumped at an extraordinary rate over the past 20 years. Most of this extraction is occurring in aquifers in the lower Colorado River Basin. Groundwater has disappeared most dramatically in the northwest and southeast, where large-scale agriculture dominates. 
we found out actually that groundwater storage is the most depleted and the losses in 20, last 20 years or 22 years, it's about uh, the storage capacity of Mead Lake, which is about 27.8 uh, million acre feet. This is a huge amount of water losses. It's a very critical situation, especially in uh, areas like Colorado Basin, because what we found that actually the losses that uh, groundwater losses from the whole basin actually it represents 70 percent from the water losses or water storage losses from the surface and the groundwater so that's mean actually your groundwater storage it's uh, giving more of the supply of your water supply Abdul Mosen explains that satellites that read topography and subsurface structures cannot determine how much water remains in the aquifers. The situation is severe. The supply could run out at any time. This deep aquifers is uh, mostly is confined. Confined means isolated from from the environment or from the system. So. It's very difficult and sometimes actually chances are zero to get this aquifers recharged. One farm in particular became a flashpoint over excessive groundwater use. For years it produced water-intensive hay. But last year the state sued the operation, alleging that its pumping caused land subsidence in surrounding areas. The company ultimately withdrew from the site. The hay grown there had been destined for Saudi Arabia, a country with extremely limited water resources. And Saudi Arabia is not the only nation depending on US hay. Last year, Japan was the largest export destination. 牧草を作るっていうのは大量の水を消費しますので、逆にこう日本の畜産業がアメリカの飼料に頼っていることによってアメリカの水不足を加速させるというようなことも考えられます。consuming water indirectly through production processes, this is the concept known as virtual water. Japan is effectively importing massive amounts of water in the form of agricultural products. 家畜用の飼料が加水によって安定供給できなくなるということは日本の畜産業なんかにも持続可能性にも影響が出るんじゃないかなと思っております食料安全保障と気候変動がつながるような時代になってきているので経済ネットワークがグローバル化していることを考え
even the rights to use river water have become targets for investment. Cibola is a small town in La Paz County in western Arizona. Between 2013 and 14, Greenstone Management Partners, an investment firm, bought about 500 acres of land here, an area bordered by the Colorado River and the desert, for roughly $9.8 million. It later sold the river water rights attached to the property to a water-demanding municipality, Queen Creek, for about $24 million. The fact that Cibola's water was traded at such high prices and exported elsewhere sent shockwaves through this town of fewer than 250 residents. It, nothing like that has ever happened before. And so the concern was if you allow for one transfer, in my opinion, you're just opening up Pandora's box because the initial use of that water was supposed to be for development, recreational purposes up and down the Colorado River, not to be sent to the town of Queen Creek. So the concern was if, if that's going to be allowed for one transfer, how many more are gonna come knocking on the door? Last July, Irwin's fears materialized. A New York investment firm moved into the county, purchasing land at nearly triple the previous price. She believes their real aim is the groundwater. They purchased a piece of property for $100 million cash um, when that property prior had been sold for $30 million. I think that investors are seeing the issues that the state of Arizona is having with water, whether, again, whether it be groundwater or surface water. And I think that they're here to take advantage of that situation and see how much money that they can make off of, you know, the dire straits, you know, stemming from years and years of drought and over pumping and not replenishing our basins, you know, as, as they need to be. But that when you have people that are coming and looking at property, you know, that's the interest is the water right port, you know, aspect of that land. Um, you know, and if it's for development here, if it's for, you know, generating revenue for La Paz County, I'm all for that. But if it's something that's going to be transferred out of the area just to make money off of it, you know, that's something that I can't support. It's got friendly people. I, it's just, you got the best of both worlds. You got, it's almost like the last part of the Wild West. Go out your driveway, you can go left and go down to the river, to, and you can go right and go out in the desert and explore. You know, you can go out in the desert, you see bighorn sheep. We got herds of wild horses out here. It's just beautiful. It's just our little paradise, and we would like to keep it. <laughs> 